Hello, everyone. I'm Daniel Hurtado, Exeter. Uh, first of all, thanks to Joseph and to Ludipi and to everyone for making this ThinkyCon possible and for organizing and everything. I think it's been really wonderful three days with a lot of talks, and I'm very excited to be part of it. And yes, without any further introductions, uh, let's get to talking about the beautiful state graph of Microban 1. But before that, there might be a couple of questions like what's a state graph and what's Microban 1? Uh, let's start with the second one. Microban 1 is possibly the most famous Sokoban level. Sokoban, for those of you that don't know, is a very it's a classic puzzle game where you control a player that moves in a grid and there are boxes and there are targets and you have to get all the boxes into the targets and you can only push a uh, one box at a time and that's it uh, this game is really simple but really it's really simple and really universal and has a lot of it has a huge possibility space so a, a huge snyder capacity as a little would say uh, yes yeah, so along a long time, a lot of people have been making custom puzzles for it. And 24 years ago, David Skinner released the, the Microban set, which is like 150 Sokoban levels, focus each of them very tiny and focus on a single core idea or Sokoban trick. And yeah, these are really wonderful levels. They follow the, the modern puzzle design sensibilities of levels shouldn't be tedious they should focus on a thing they should have a clear central idea and yes these are 150 wonderful levels and microban a1 is the first of this so why this one in particular has got so famous uh, well my theory is that it's because of puzzle script puzzle script is a hugely influential thing in the thinking community it's an engine uh, for quickly making grid-based games like like Sokoban. So in the default, the default level of the default uh, example project for puzzle script is Microban one, which means that a lot of people have seen it. So it has given it kind of like a meme status. You know, like just like the Lorem Ipsum test text that is used as the placeholder in web pages, it's kind of like a, a reference. So it's Tradition, if you are making a thinky puzzle game with like crates and walls and targets and so on, to include a, a reference to Microban 1 in your game. Even if your game has completely different mechanics, it can, and you just need a random Sokoban level, it's, you will usually use a Microban 1. But yeah, that, this is Microban 1. Uh, but I'm not here to talk about the shape of Microban 1. I'm here to talk about the state graph of Microban 1. So what's the state graph? It's the graph of states. And let me show you a, an example. Here on the left, again, we have Microban 1. And right now, it's, there's no hidden information of this game. It, everything there is to know about the level is visible right now. So the player is here, this grade is here, that grade is there. So if we take a, a screenshot of the level and store it here, then a, a, like this is a, a thing that exists. Then we can move and we can take, a, let's say, another screenshot. And each of these screenshots, it's a, it's a node in a graph, which you don't need to know what that means. But basically, from its new state is one of these circles, and they have a certain structure. So from you cannot go from any state to any other state. You have to go through other, some other states first. And uh, for example, here, note that if I move down and then up, I end up in a different state between this state and this state. They are different because even if the player, player's avatar is in the same position, this grade isn't. So it's a different state. And yeah, the state graph is basically a, exactly this. Uh, you start to generate the state graph. You just start with the with the initial state and just uh, use brute force to to explore all of it and to do all possible moves. And this will generate a graph that you have all the all the information about the level should be contained here. And yeah, this is kind of neat. But why do we care? Well, 
it's because all the information about the level is contained here. So in some sense, this is like the true representation of a puzzle. It's, it's a state graph. And this, is, this can be seen that like there's a reflection between this mathematical structure and the, the process that we as players and designers uh, take when playing and designing these puzzles. So as a first example, here, for example, we have a note that we have a one-way arrow from this state to this other state. You know, the player moves up, and this is a one-way arrow. So as players, uh, we know that when a crate gets stuck on a corner, that's it. There's no way in vanilla Sokoban, there's no way to get the crate out of that corner. So we can we can know that like as a as a feel thing. But also we can discover that as a using brute force. Because if we look at the state graph, even if we fully explored all of these the whole graph, we could find that in this whole region, like all the states in this region have the this grid here. So all of this region only has inbound arrows. There are no there are no arrows that leave this region. And this is like a mathematical thing that you can that you can check mechanically, which also but which which corresponds to part of the experience of solving the puzzle. And that's why we are interested in state graphs. Some other examples. Earlier, we heard Elliot talking about uh, key moves or bottlenecks. And this is also something that we care about as players and designers. And that is also evident in the, in the structure of the graph. So here, let's say that the player starts in some state in this cluster. And if they want to get to the solution, which is over here, they must find the unique key move that takes them from one area of the state graph to another. And for example, we could very easily make a level with two bottlenecks, just place one until under, after the other, and that's it. And we can see that in the graph structure. And yeah, maybe we can like look at the state graph of a level. Uh, for example, this could be a level with a lot of dead ends because the player can explore very deeply in one direction without actually getting closer to the solution. And once they commit to a direction, they cannot go back. These are one-way arrows. Um, yeah, here's a last example. This could be, for example, a very tight level because at each point in the level, it's just, you have very few options, but also a very deep level because there's a lot of stuff you have to do to get to the goal. So just by looking at the, the state graph, we can like get a feel of how will this level uh, feel like uh, for a player. OK, so now that we know all about state graphs, let's look at the, at the complete state graph of Microbank 1 and see what it can tell us about the, the experience of playing Microbank 1. Uh, here, it takes a bit of time to, to load. Note that the, even if this is a very, very tiny level, since mo each of the parts can move independently from the others, uh, its new possibility, like its new create position, multiplies the the number of states, which means that from a very tiny level we had we get a huge state graph. And I don't know about you, but when I look here, I see nothing. Like this is just noise. This is not. This is not beautiful, and we cannot use this to to gain any insight about Microbank One and what about the puzzle. And this is because it's too granular. We need to to abstract a bit. So for that, let's take inspiration from the player. The player when they play Sokoban, usually they are not thinking about each individual key press. Instead, they are thinking about higher level goals like moving boxes. So from the point of view of the player, they are not thinking, I'm going to go down, 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 right, up. Instead, they are thinking, I'm going to move the left box up. And for, for them, this is just one state change. So 
we can see here, for example, all of these states are basically the same. So yeah, what we are going to do is take all of these and collapse them into a single state because the player is in the same position for all, for all of them. So now let's roll the state graph, but ignoring the player's position. And we can see that from the starting space state, there are now four options. Move this crate up or down, and move this crate a left or right. So if we expand the whole thing, the first thing we notice is that it's now much smaller. So that's a win. But also, more importantly, it has a lot more structure, which is very will be very important later. Still, it's a bit too many nodes to manually, manually analyze. So let's take another last step, uh, which will be to trim the sum of the, space, of the states. For example, if we look at these five states, they are basically the same, except that the left box is going up and down. No? But me as a player, I don't think of these five states as different states. I don't think about them as total because once this crate is stuck on a corner, that's it. Like, I don't care at all about all these states. So let's uh, redraw the graph again, but removing the states where a crate is in a corner or where this crate is in this wall. And when we do that, we finally get to the, to the beautiful state graph of microban one. And this is a tiny state graph as it should correspond to a tiny level. Okay, let me rotate it a bit and a couple of aesthetic changes for the structure to be clearer, but this is just the, the state graph. Okay, we can finally start. Let's take a look at it and use it to, to interpret uh, Microban 1. The first thing we will notice is that it has a very clear uh, two-dimensional grid structure. So, a structure. If we look in the vertical direction, we can see that moving vertically is more or less is equivalent to moving this the left crate up and down. And doesn't matter where we are. When we move vertically in the graph, we it's, we move the left box up and down. And similarly, when we move horizontally along the graph, it's equivalent to moving the right crate closer to the goal. So the right crate has five steps to the goal, and they correspond to these five five columns in the graph. And also, it has like this extra space it can be in, which corresponds to this this appendix that grows out of the two-dimensional structure. Okay, uh, so let's just let's forget about the level and just take a look at the graph. Given that we start here and we want we want to get there, uh, the rational or the the simplest solution would be to just move in a in a straight line. So we comp we just go from this state to this state to this state, and we would we would win the level. But of course, this is impossible because we cannot move from this state with these two crates here into this other state. It's just not possible because we cannot get the player here. The left crate being on the target prevents us from solving the right crate. Okay, it's just not possible. Okay, so given this, uh, our next uh, try could be uh, going up, then left, then right, then down to avoid this this obstacle, which could, in terms of the level, would mean moving this left box out of the way. Now, moving the right box to its target and then moving the left box back to its original position. But of course, this doesn't work because this is uh, all those arrows are one way. So the solution fails again. Now, the right box being on the target prevents us from solving the left box. Like there's a, it rhymes with the previous situation. So, What's the what's the actual solution? Well, it's this more convoluted path, which is equivalent. Like in terms of the graph, we can see that it's more twisty than the magenta or the green path. But and in terms of the level, it means uh, start by getting the left crate out of the way, then half solving the right crate, 
then storing it in this extra position that is outside of the two dimensional grid. And now we can get the left grid back down and finally solve the right grid. And now we have solved microband one. And yeah, that's about it. I think it's really beautiful. How can we, how we started with a mathematical thing, a mathematical object generated by brute force, but like it reflects the actual experience of solving microband one. If you look at a, at a player with little Sokoban experience approach this level, the first thing will, they will try usually is to push this box here. And then they realize that it blocks their way. Then they will get here, realize that if they finish pushing, pushing the box, it will block their way. And finally, uh, find the correct solution. And uh, yeah, I think it's really unique how like there's a reflection between like the mathematical structure and the, the actual player psychology. Um, I don't know. I think. You are all now world experts in the beautiful state graph of microband one. But before, okay, this is all very nice and so on. But even better, it has some practical applications. Uh, and my favorite application of this is a plagiarism. If we have a concrete work of art, if we can produce like a, an abstract, a summary, uh, then we can take that summary and bring it back into another concrete work of art. And it's, this lets us create new works of art with the same the same summary, let's say. So let's do that for microband one. Now that we know uh, how its state graph looks, let's use that to make a puzzle with the same state graph. So here's a puzzle. Uh, there are it's a physical puzzle. Like there are two wires. Each of them has a has a bit, like a, a ball. And the goal is to get both of them into their to their end of their wires. This puzzle is made exclusively for ThinkyCon 2024. Okay, so this one starts already solved. Let's just take the other one and solve it. But of course, this doesn't work because the purple being solved prevents us from solving the other one. This might be familiar. Okay, no problem. Let's just remove this, solve this and take this one back. But of course, this doesn't work either. The yellow being solved prevents us from solving the purple one. OK, so what's the solution? Well, the solution is to find a, a new state where the yellow is, let's say, half solved. And now the yellow, we unsolve the purple one, half solved the yellow one. And now we can finish solving the yellow. And that's that's the solution for this simple puzzle, which should hopefully I'm not crazy and you see that it's more or less the same as microband one. And yeah, I think it's really interesting how there might be aliens out there. They might not have Sokoban, they might not have uh, boxes and pushing and targets and so on. But if they have puzzles, it's possible that they have one with the same state graph as microband one. Uh, this example is a bit convoluted. Uh, let me show you a real world example of plagiarism. And yeah, this is my level for lab rational thinking, which is again that we made collectively in the thinking collective. Uh, one person, each person takes the game from the previous one, adds a single level or a single mechanic, or uh, changes the art and passes it to the next person. So when my turn came, I had no idea of what level to make. But luckily, I uh, I knew about the state graph of microband one, and I'm not afraid to do plagiarism. So I just took a simplified version of the, of the state graph with only the first two paths and made it into a level for this game. And in this level, there are two crates and two buttons. and I want, as a designer, I want the player to forget about this crate and just try to move this other crate directly to the button, which could, in the state space, would correspond directly move to the solution. And of course, this doesn't work. The trick of the level is that they have to get this box out of its solved position 
use that as leverage to move the other box into position and then resolve the original one. And yeah, this is a real level that in a real game that's uh, made from from the state graph of microband one. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, just to recap, here's some. Okay, so like this is a thing that you can do. Uh, just to recap, uh, here's some actionable advice to close the talk. So if you are making a thingy puzzle game, if it's like a, if it's a Sokoban like with grid base and boxes and so on, make a level with the shape of microband one, uh, which just as a meme as a reference but more importantly even if your game doesn't isn't based on sokoban you can probably make a one level with the same state graph as microban one and this is very useful when you need just one more level or you are a bit stuck and don't know what to do you need to design levels which is hard i think uh, just looking at microband one for inspiration and adapt it to the unique mechanics of your game. This is like actionable advice that you can do right now if you are making a thinky puzzle game. But more importantly, I want all of you to keep an eye out for other plots because microband one, I mean microband, the set of levels has another more than a hundred other levels, and there's also microband two and microband three and microband four and millions of released puzzles. So I think it's important to, or it's valuable, valuable to take a look at these puzzles and like see what plots they are using. Like try solve a puzzle, try to write down the story that it's telling, and then you can use that. Uh, you can put that on your tool belt for making your own puzzles. Not as a reference, but as a tool, in the same way that musicians have like their 251 chords or that writers have their three act structure. Like we as puzzle designers should have uh, some common plots or fables of uh, puzzles. So, yeah, that's about it. Uh, thank you everyone for listening. Um, you're now Microbang One experts. Um, uh, any questions? I don't know if there's time, but I haven't been looking at the chat. So I... <laughs> Thank you for the talk, Daniel. That was amazing. Uh, I thought I knew everything you were going to say because I'd seen like previous drafts of this. But then when you showed the lab rational thinking puzzle, I was like, oh my god, that's awesome. <laughs> <laughs> right behind you. Of course it is. Uh, and I love the idea of being able to take away those like like take those puzzles and just remake them completely and they just feel like completely different puzzles even if they're the same state graph it's fantastic yeah. uh there are a couple of questions Lots. i'll i'll try and ask them if we can get um we were a little bit behind starting so we'll go a little bit behind i'll be also on the discord cool yeah. I'll, I'll ask a couple of them anyway uh so plush lola has asked um is there a way to make state graphs for arbitrary puzzles what tool are you using for my Yes, for this one in particular, it's a bit uh, handmade. But in general, as long as you code, like you can code your whole game as a single function. Like you can, is, you can code your game as a pure function that takes a state and an input and produces a new state. And as long as you can code your game this way, which is the case of uh, all turn-based games. First, you get Undo for free, which is nice. And also, you can plug it into any graph library and look at the result. Uh, for this, I'm using BizJS, which is like a JavaScript library for drawing graphs and so on. But any graph library will work. Note that like this is just a microband one, and it already generates this huge like for the general case, it's not practical to draw the whole state graph. So yeah. you can also like play the game and have pen and paper and note, okay, from here I can get to here. Like more high level states, like create this stack to this wall. Uh, but yeah, if you want to go programming wise, there are, it's possible. 
I remember once trying to generate the state graph for lacrimose head in Stephen's sausage roll and <laughs> just realized it's an absurdly large state graph on my, I think I, I left it running for like a day. It was like, oh, this is probably not going to actually finish. Um, anyway, we don't have time for any more questions. Oh, sorry, Daniel. And also, like, you can start by generating the graph and then, okay, this is too big, but, but I see like it has some structure, so maybe I can collapse these nodes. Mm -hmm. And like iteratively, uh, keep reducing the graph. Absolutely, indeed. Uh, so yes, thank you, thank you, Daniel, for that. Um...